everyone, welcome to Little Things. This cat beanie tutorial is highly requested, so I'm finally doing it. Reminder to watch the whole intro because I'm going to go over the materials and also the measurements for making this cat beanie. So this cat beanie is super beginner friendly. So from round two and onwards, it is the exact same thing. So once you get the hang of it, which I'm sure you'll be able to, you can definitely finish the whole beanie. And after making it, you can definitely sell the finished products. And this is a sign for you to start your own crochet account and share your journey and sell your crochet creations. So let me introduce you to Universe, which is a website building app where it makes creating websites for your community and brands so much easier. So my favorite thing about Universe is how user-friendly it is. Universe is an app for creating websites where you can pick your personalized domain and customize your website. So I'm just showing you on my phone right now. There's so many websites template for you to choose from which makes your job so much easier. Everything is very self-explanatory and there's tons of features such as doodling, changing backgrounds, adding photos and adding buttons to redirect people to other links such as your YouTube channel or your Etsy. And if you're not planning to sell, it is also perfect for the link in bio or to make a crochet journal to connect with your community. And there's this really cool feature called AI assistance, which means if you have zero inspiration for your website, you can literally ask AI to build a whole website for you. If you're based in the US, Universe Cellblock allows you to sell your creations in minutes. Universe is free, but you can jump to Universe Pro to remove Universe branding, get your own custom.com domain, make discount codes, and unlock so many other cool features. And go check out my link in the description box and get started with Universe today. Now let's talk about what materials I'll be using. So I'll be using a 4.5mm hook with a 10-ply acrylic yarn with two colors, stitch marker, darning needle, measuring tape, and scissors. Because this project is completely customizable, you can make it different sizes as you'd like. You can also use a different size yarn with the corresponding hook size. And you can use one color only or multiple colors or as many colors as you want. You can get my supplies on my Amazon storefront, which I've linked down below. Now let's get your measurements. So first, we're gonna grab our measuring tape. We're gonna measure the circumference of our head. So I'm just going to wrap the um, measuring tape around my head, like in the middle of your forehead. I know I look crazy right now, but basically get your measurements like this. And I got 54. Now take this number and then divide it by two. And that would be the length for your foundation chain. And everyone's length for their foundation chain is gonna be different. So just chain accordingly. And I'll demonstrate it now. My head circumference turned out to be 54 and then you can use inch if you want to but I just like using centimeters. We need to take this number and then divide it by 2. So mine would be 27. And the reason why we need to divide it by 2 is that our cat beanie is gonna have two sides and then it's gonna fold like this. So your beanie is gonna look like this so that's the reason why we need to divide it by two and this is the length of our foundation chain when it's stretched out so now let's make the foundation chain i'm going to start off by using white yarn and also it is okay if you use a single color one but i'm planning on using white yarn and also pink yarn so there will be a color change but i'll also show you a version without the color change. First, we're going to make a slip knot. We're gonna grab the end of the tail with our right hand, and then for our left hand, I'm gonna point two fingers up. Then I'm gonna wrap the yarn around my two fingers once, just like this, and this would create a loop on my left hand and then a tail on my right hand. Then I'm gonna grab this tail through the loop on my left hand. So I'm using my thumb and then my left fingers to like pull the tail through the loop on my left hand and then pull it to secure. There will be a loop and also a knot. We're gonna adjust the loop here by pulling the tail. And then we're gonna place the hook into the loop and then pull it, pull the tail. And we want the loop to be, there will be a tiny gap here just so the hook can move freely but not too loose. The way I'm holding the yarn is that I'm going to place the yarn on top of my three fingers, my middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. And I'm going to wrap around these three fingers once. Then I'm going to bring the yarn behind my index finger and then hold my piece with my middle finger and thumb. And then my index finger is always pointed up like this. And the way I'm holding the hook is just like how I'm writing, just like how I'm holding a pen. 
And then now let's start chaining. So to chain, we're going to yarn over. So first to yarn over, we're going to bring our hook to the back of the working yarn and then over and on top. So we've wrapped the yarn around our hook once. Then we're going to pull it through this loop on our hook here. Just pull it through it and this is our first chain. So you can see there will be a V and one V represent one chain. So we're going to do it until we reach our measurement. So yarn over again, bring our hook over and on top of the working yarn here, then pull it through the loop on your hook, just like this. And then again, yarn over, pull it through, and then again, yarn over, then pull it through. Yarn over, pull it through. Now we have a bunch of Vs. We basically need to repeat this until we reach your measurement. So for me, it is 27, and for you, it might be different. To measure our foundation chain, remember to stretch it. So just pull it on both sides. And when it's stretched out, when all the chains are stretched out, this is how we measure it. So I'm just gonna keep chaining until I reach my um, desired length. So to yarn over, just wrap the yarn around your hook, then pull it through the loop on your hook. Measure it and then I'm gonna stretch my foundation chain. And then as you can see, it is way past 27. 27 is over here, but my chain is like four centimeters longer. So to um, undo some chains, we just need to take our hook out and then just gently pull the working yarn here. And I've already undo one chain. Now I just need to continue pulling until I reach my desired length. And I'm just gonna measure it again. So I've reached it, then I'm just gonna... Now we're gonna chain two more chains. And this two extra chains, we're not gonna count into our measurement. So we just do our first chain and the second extra chain. And these two extra chains is gonna give the height for our round one. And let's start our round one. So our round one is basically double crochet all across our foundation chain and then around as well. And since double crochet has a height, that's why we need chain two to give the height for the stitches. And then now we're going to do our first double crochet. We're going to place our double crochet into the third chain from our hook. So as you can see, each V represents one chain. So this V right here that's closest to our hook is the first chain. Then this V right here, right below the first chain, is the second one. Then the one below it is the third one. So I'm gonna place my thumb here to indicate that it is the third chain. Let's do our first double crochet. To do a double crochet, we're going to yarn over first. Bring our hook behind and then on top and over the working yarn. So you've wrapped the working yarn around your hook once. Then we're going to insert our hook into the third chain. So our third chain is this chain on my left thumb. Then I'm going to insert it into it, just basically like right in the middle of the V. Then we're going to yarn over again, bring the hook on top of the working yarn here, and then grab it like this, then pull it through the chain. And this would bring up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over again, bring the hook on top of the working yarn, and then pull it through just the first two loops. Now we're left with two loops on our hook, yarn over, and then pull it through the rest of the two loops. And this is our first double crochet. And we're going to place the stitch marker into the very first double crochet to mark it. This is the double crochet, and right above the double crochet, there will be a V. And this is where we're going to be inserting our stitch marker into, just like this and then close the stitch marker. And if you look at it from the side, it's the top V on the side. And then now we can go ahead and place our hook back into the stitch, uh, back into the loop, and then continue crocheting. And we're basically going to make double crochet all across. 
So now to do a second double crochet, we're going to yarn over first. So insert our hook into the second chain. As you can see, this chain right here is stretched out because there is one double crochet in it, which is the previous chain. So the chain on its left is the following chain. So this is where we need to insert our hook into. Like this. Then we're going to yarn over, bring our hook on top of the working yarn and then pull it through the chain. Now we got three loops on our hook. Yarn over, and then pull it through just the first two loops. Now we're left with two loops on our hook. Yarn over, and then pull it through the last two loops. And then we're gonna do it for the third double crochet. Yarn over first before inserting our hook. Then we're gonna place the double crochet into the next chain space. So you can see this is stretched out, then the chain on its left is the chain we're going to be inserting our hook into. After inserting, yarn over, place your hook on top of the working yarn, then pull it through the chain space, then we have three loops on our hook, yarn over, and then pull it through just the first two loops. Now we're left with two loops on our hook, yarn over, and then pull it through the last two loops. Now we're going to do our fourth one, yarn over first. I like to place my thumb on the next chain to indicate so I don't miss a chain. So insert your hook into the next chain space here, basically the next V, and then yarn over, pull it through the chain space, then we got three loops on our hook, yarn over, then pull it through just the first two loops. Now we're left with two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull it through the rest of the two loops. So for our fifth one, it's the same thing, yarn over first, insert our hook into the next chain, then yarn over again, pull it through the chain space, now we got three loops on our hook, yarn over, Pull it through just the first two loops. Now we got two loops left on our hook. Yarn over and then pull it through the rest of the two loops. Again, yarn over, insert our hook into the next chain space. Then yarn over again, pull it through the chain. Now we got three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull it through the first two loops. Now we got three. Uh, now we got two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the rest of the two loops, just like this. And now we've already done six double crochet, and then we're just going to repeat this, basically doing the exact same thing that we did before, but across the whole foundation chain until the last chain. So let's just say that this where you're supposed to put your double crochet into this chain. But then you accidentally place a double crochet on the next chain space. You've missed one chain and you can see that there's a big gap here. So the way to undo it, take your hook out. Then we're going to pull this working yarn. Gently pull it to unravel the stitch that we made. And then stick your hook back into the loop and then just continue crocheting just like this and then placing a double crochet into the correct chain space and then move on so i'm gonna go ahead and finish it off and then basically it is the exact same thing you're confused or you forgot how to do it just rewatch these parts because it is just going to be the same all across And then here I am on my last chain. I'm just going to place my very last double crochet into the into the chain. And then you'll have a whole roll of double crochet just like this. The length might be different from mine, but that's completely fine. We have since we have different measurements. 
And then on the very last chain space here, I've already put one double crochet and we need to have a total of three to transition us to the back of the foundation chain and then we're gonna start working on the back like this on the other side. So now we have already done one, we're gonna do two more double crochet and the exact same chain space. If you don't know which chain space it is, just gently like pull the foundation chain and you can see there will be like a big hole here. So basically just place your double crochet into this, this big gap here and then just place one double crochet here and then now we have two double crochet in this last chain we just need a total of three so i'm just gonna place my last double crochet in there so now i have three double crochet in this last chain space then i'm going to turn my work then i'm gonna be working on the bottom of the foundation chain which is the other side since the very first chain space here already has three double crochet, we're not gonna do another double crochet on the first chain. We're gonna start doing the double crochet on the second double crochet here, the second chain. So yarn over first, then insert our hook into the second chain here. How do you know where to insert your hook? It's basically the space right above the double crochet on the bottom. This is the double crochet and right above it is where we're going to be inserting our hook into. So just like this. So as you can see here, there will be the tail. We are going to put the tail on top of our hook to hide it. So we don't have to weave in later. We don't have to hide the tail later, which saves us a lot of time. So we're going to do the double crochet just like normal. Yarn over, go through the first two loops. We're left with two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through the rest of the two loops, just like this. So we're going to yarn over first. For the upcoming stitch here, we're going to place our hook right on top of the stitch, so which is this base here. Then for the tail here, it is also caught on our hook. Then just do a double crochet. Now we've got three loops, yarn over, pull through the first two loops. We're left with two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull it through the loop on your hook. So now as you can see, each stitch at the bottom has a corresponding double crochet on top of it. So basically, it is kind of like a reflection and it's going to be the same on both sides. So to find the chain space, you can either look at like this. You can see there's like bumps and every bump is going to have one um, stitch on it or you can use the stitches on the at the bottom for a reference. So this stitch is the next stitch, then the space right above the next stitch is going to be where we're gonna insert our hook into. So just insert it, then yarn over, place a double crochet, just like this. And then just keep on um, making double crochet all across Just like this Also remember the tail is always going to be caught on our hook until it runs out So I'm just going to continue what I'm doing until I reach the end of the round here, the last stitch, and then I'll meet you there. So now I'm on my last stitch. I'm just going to place one double crochet into the last chain space just like this and then this at the bottom is the chain two on the very left then this the actual um, first stitch then if you remember on the other side where we kind of turn our work we did three double crochet in total so we need to do one more double crochet in the last stitch to have a total of three double crochet so yarn over insert our hook into the last chain space here 
So basically on the very last stitch, you'll have two double crochet at the end. Now we're going to join to the very first stitch here and then we're gonna be starting our round two and then doing our work in rounds. First, I'm going to show you how to start round two without the color change. And then I'm gonna show you later how to join to the very first stitch and start round two with the color change. So first, if you want to use the same color, insert your hook into this stitch right here, which is the very first stitch where the stitch marker is at. Just insert it into that stitch basically going under a V, remove the stitch marker, and then do a slip stitch. To do a slip stitch, yarn over, pull it through the stitch, then pull it through the loop on your hook. Then really tighten it, and this step is very important, the, or else the slip stitch would be mistaken as a stitch. Now you've tightened the slip stitch, we're going to start round two. So round two, to start we need to chain two, so yarn over, pull it through the loop on your hook. This is chain one, chain two, yarn over, pull it through the loop on your hook, just like this. This would give height for the double crochet and this would start round two. And then everything is going to be the same, basically place one double crochet in each stitch. And it's gonna be the same, but I'm gonna demonstrate it with a color change because I do want it to be a different color for round two. So if you want to join to the very first stitch and then do a color change for round two, we're going to prepare our yarn that is in a different color. Then we're going to do a slip stitch to the very first stitch. So normally you will have a stitch marker in the very first stitch, but since I demonstrated it, I took it off. So I'm just going to insert my hook into the very first stitch, just like this. Then I'm going to grab my second color yarn. Basically just place the yarn like this on top of the hook and then pull it through the stitch and also pull it through the loop on your hook. And then we're going to pull these two tails, so the white color yarn as well as the pink tail. We're gonna pull it tight. From now on for round two, we're not going to use our white yarn anymore. Um, but for round three, we're going to grab it to alternate the colors. So right now, let's start with um, the pink yarn. So now we're going to chain two to start round two. So to chain two, yarn over first, pull it through the loop on your hook. This would create a V. Yarn over, pull it through the loop on your hook. Now we have two Vs, which means we have two chains. And if you didn't do the color change, it is completely the same, so just follow along. It's just that I have a different color yarn, doesn't mean that the pattern is going to change. We're going to yarn over first, then we're going to insert our hook into the very first stitch. If you look at your work from above, there's a bunch of Vs. Each V represents one stitch. Then this V is the closest to the chain, so this is the very first stitch. Now we're going to insert it into the first stitch, basically going under a V. So you can see the V is right on top of my hook. For the tail, for the pink tail, if you did do a color change, we're going to put this tail on top of the hook like this then we're going to do a normal double crochet just like how we did before we're going to place one double crochet in one stitch so yarn over first insert our hook into the next stitch so the next stitch is basically the next V so this V already has one double crochet so the one on the left is the next V so insert your hook into the next V so the V is right on top of my hook then put the tail on top of our hook so the reason why we need to um, catch the tail on our hook is because we need to hide the tail so we don't need to um, hide the tail at the end of the project so this is my second double crochet now we're going to do our third one, so yarn over, insert our hook into the third stitch. Go under a V, like this, and then place the tail on top of our hook. Yarn over, pull it through. Now we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull it through the first two loops. Yarn over, pull it through the first two. Just like this. 
now this is actually the same all across this round we're just going to place one double crochet in each and every stitch so let me just demonstrate it one more time we're going to place a double crochet into the next stitch which is here the next v yarn over pull it through yarn over pull through the first two loops yarn over pull through the rest of the two loops just like this So I'm just going to continue doing this until the end. So you have something that looks like this and then let me just finish off this side and then I'll catch you up later. So I've reached like the turning point of our work and you might be wondering how we're gonna do this but basically it's literally the same just one double crochet at a time. So for the next stitch just place one normal double crochet like this. For the next one here it is like on the side. And then we just need to insert it into the stitch. Then just place a normal double crochet just like how we did before. And then again here, place just one double crochet. Just like this. So on the side here, it is the same as here. I'm gonna do one double crochet at a time until we reach the end. So now I'm on my last stitch. I'm just going to place my last double crochet. And then if you want to do a color change, then just bear with me. Then if you don't want to do it, then let me show you now. So insert your hook into the very first stitch. To find the very first stitch, basically look at the first stitch here. And then the V that's right above the very first stitch is where we're going to be inserting our hook into. And if you look at it from the side, you'll see there is chain two, which is the chain two that gives height for round two. So the V that's on top of the chain two is the first stitch. So just insert it, then do a slip stitch. So yarn over, then pull it through the stitch, pull and then also pull it through the loop on your hook. Then really tighten it. So this is how you do a no collar change beanie. Then just chain two, then do repeat uh, round two all across and then just keep on repeating it but if you want to do a color change I'm gonna show you one more time we're going to insert our hook into the very first stitch just here I've showed you how to find it so just insert it we're going to grab the white yarn that was left hanging from round one but here we just grab it then we're going to yarn over using the white yarn then pull it through the stitch, then pull it through the loop on our hook. Then we're going to tighten it. We're going to tighten the pink yarn, pull the pink yarn, and also pull the loop on your hook. So for round three, chain two, yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook. Now we have chain two. Now we're going to repeat round two. Actually, from now on, we're only going to repeat round two all across until you reach your desired length. So actually, from now on, it is like literally the same. You can just rewatch round two if you're confused. 
because nothing is changing it is literally just going to expand upwards it's gonna like this yeah it's literally just like a rectangle but i'm still gonna show you how to do round three just one more time so after this to find your first stitch it is the v right next to the chain space here so the v on the left so yarn over first insert your hook into the v like this and then do a double crochet like this and then just what placing one double crochet at a time insert your hook into the next stitch just like this then yarn over insert your hook here basically placing one double crochet at a time So this is what you should have right now. I'm just gonna continue with my round three and then I'm gonna crochet around it and then here and then I'll meet you at the very last stitch. So now I've finished my round three. So it looks something like this. And then now I'm going to switch colors, but if you don't wanna switch colors, you can rewatch the demonstration I did for the previous rounds. So to switch colors, I'm going to insert my hook into the very first stitch. The V that I'm going to be inserting into is the V that's right above the very first double crochet here. So right above it, which is this V. And if you count the Vs from the bottom, it is the third V. So there's the chain two and then it is the third V. Then I'm going to pull it through with the pink yarn. So I'm gonna grab the pink yarn and then yarn over. So grab the yarn like this and then pull it through the stitch and then also pull it through the loop on your hook and then grab the white yarn, tighten it just like this. So it's already tightened. So it won't be mistaken as a stitch. Then now we're gonna start round four and it's basically the same chain two so yarn over pull it through yarn over pull it through and this is our chain two then now for this round i'm going to be working with pink and then i'm going to just place one double crochet in each stitch all across just like how we did in the two previous rounds so do the very first double crochet in the first stitch which is the first v Like this then into the second stitch and then for the third one is the third V so basically I'm just gonna repeat this I'm gonna crochet all around it until the end here and then I'll meet you when I'm done. So I'm gonna demonstrate it one more time because it's actually the same as you can see. So to change color, you can insert it into the very first stitch of the same round. Go under the V, and if you look at it from the side, it is the third V from the bottom. Then we're going to grab the other color yarn, yarn over, pull it through, and then pull it through the loop on their hook, on your hook. Also, Use the other color yarn, your original yarn, 
and then pull it tight we can start round five now so yarn over pull it through yarn over pull it through to chain two and then literally gonna repeat the whole thing again insert your hook into the very first stitch then just keep just one double crochet in each stitch just like this so it's basically just the same as you can see we're just going to we're just gonna keep on crocheting making more rounds according to your liking and if you're confused or you forgot how to join to the very first stitch or how to color change you can re-watch some parts of my video where i demonstrated it so i'll just meet you when i'm done so i'm on my last stitch and there's just a little reminder so as you can see here it, it might seem like there's an extra stitch but actually just pull the yarn that you did in the previous round and just tighten it and then you'll realize that you're actually on your last stitch and that like v disappeared because it's tightened so remember when you get to the last stitch you just tighten it a little bit to make sure that you don't get that mistaken as a stitch and then i'm just gonna continue remember tighten it even though I tighten it now at the start of the round, I still need to tighten it again when I get to the end, just like how I showed you before. And then I think I'm pretty happy with the length of the hat so i did a total of 18 rounds it's a little bit longer because i want to fold it up like this so that's why i did 18 but if you don't want that fold at the bottom then you can just do less rounds it's completely up to you and you can just try it on um, while you're making it to see if it's um, your suitable length then to end the project we're going to do this slip stitch with the same color yarn we're going to do the slip stitch to the very first stitch in the same round so just like how we did before we are going to join to the very first stitch and then do a yarn over pull it through the stitch then pull it through the hook uh, the loop on your hook and then tighten it just basically pull the loop very tight and then now we're gonna fasten off to fasten off we're gonna chain one so yarn over pull it through the loop and then pull a big loop just like this just like a long tail then we're gonna cut it just like this and then we need to pull it to secure and there will be a little knot here and this would secure the end if you have two colors yarn just like me You'll have this um, other color yarn just like hanging there. I'm just gonna leave a little like long tail here and then just cut it as well. Now, as you can see, we're left with two tails. We're gonna weave in. So basically to weave in, we're just gonna hide the yarn tail inside the stitches, the inside of the beanie. So first we're gonna choose one of the tails we're going to thread it through the darning needle. Then we're going to insert our needle through the stitches inside the beanie. So basically just go through the loops and then going right in between the stitches. And then when you're going through it, you can check on the outside that your needle is not sticking out or else the tail would show from the outside. After that, I'm just going to pull it through. I just like to be a little bit more secure about it. So I'm just going to go back all the loops that I went just now, but skip the first one. So the last loop that I went is this loop. I'm going to skip it and then stick my needle through the second loop and onwards. If I stick my needle in the last loop that I did, then it's going to undo everything. So I'm going to skip it and then go to the next one. Then I'm gonna pull it through. And then remember to stretch your stitches to make sure that the tail wouldn't like shrink them. You can just cut the tail, the rest of the tail, just like this. And then for the other tail, we're gonna do the same thing. 
But since the other tail we didn't really tie a knot, I'm going to tie a knot. So to tie a knot, I'm just gonna go through any loop that's close to this end. So just like literally any loop, so probably this loop right here. But make sure that the loop is not from the outside. So you can't see my needle from the outside, so it's okay. So I'm gonna stick my needle into that hole, into that loop. And then on my left hand, I'm going to hold the um, remaining tail. And I'm gonna pull it through a little bit, just halfway. And then see this loop right here on my left hand? I'm gonna stick my needle into that loop. And then pull it completely through and then just tie a little knot here you can see it here so it will like secure um the end now we're gonna repeat what we did before where we hide the tail inside the stitches so basically just go through the loops from the inside of the beanie and then you have to check if you can see the needle to pull it through I'm gonna go back to the loops, but skip the very last one, which is this one right here. Then I'm going to go through them all again. And then just pull it through. And then you can just cut the remaining tail. And then stretch your stitches. And there you go, you will have a cat beanie. Basically it looks like a pouch or like a rectangle just like to fold it up like this I think it looks more flattering this way so you don't have to maybe you don't have enough rounds to do the fold at the bottom but it's completely fine it's up to you so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial so remember to subscribe turn on notification bell and I do crochet with me live stream usually on the weekend so you can join me so yeah I'll see you guys next time Bye!